Next question is from Marissa Lane. How do we know if needing to change foot position for a squat, such as widening feet or slightly pointing toes outward, is due to limited mobility or if it's related to our individual hip anatomy? I picked this question mm. because... Uh, we got covered in, this not too long Yeah, ago. we did, and we got into a, a... I don't know if you guys got any blowback from that. I got blowback from that. Um, what, from trainers? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. There's always, you know, somebody who, uh, we said something about, you know, that being an excuse that a lot of people make, right. That they don't have, you know, the, the right hips to, to do that. So they right. have to open their toes up. Um, and I, I think I made a statement about that being an excuse more often than it's really what's going on. Right. And Kelly Starrett did a really good video. Like, I don't know, this is now probably a two, three week old conversation. And he made the case of if you could sit down in his chair and you could turn your feet uh, straight forward, you should be able to squat with your your feet straight forward. And then mm -hmm. that and I made a comment under there, and then I got a bunch of the other you know trainers you know getting going getting after me back and forth. Um, and and here's and Squat University just did another post on that, right? Talking about the anatomy, the hip anatomy on some people, and that some people will have to have their feet turned outward. Um, I agree with that. I, I agree that we are all very, very unique, and I think that everybody's hips are totally different. Um, but I, I don't think that we are that different that the majority need to turn their feet outward. That's what I don't think, and that's yeah. what I disagree with. I would make the case based off of my experience. Okay, and I'm not. This is not me, you know, qualifying you who who does this, and I don't know who you are, and I haven't seen you. But in my experience. You know, at least 80% of the people that could not squat without their feet turning outward, it was a mobility issue first. Um, and once we addressed the hip and ankle mobility, they could squat to depth with their toes straight. It was not, uh, uh, it was not their hips that was a limiting factor. Does that mean that everybody is that way? No, there's, I'm sure there's all kinds of exceptions to the rule. I, I know better than that, but I do think that because there, that's become a, a popular thing to talk about the, the hip anatomy and how everyone's so different that it's, it's justified many people squatting with their feet turned all the way out when they're not addressing mobility issues. I think, yeah, I might agree with that. If, if, if we're talking about just like a base, like this is like my homeostasis in terms of, of like the most, optimal way for me to stand when I'm squatting based off my anatomy and what that provides. But also I shouldn't think that limited. I shouldn't think that that's the only position I'm ever going to squat. And to me, that's ridiculous. I, I would need to then work my way towards, you know, my toes pointing straight or, or out externally rotated. I'm always trying to make sure even my stance, if it's too wide, if it's too narrow, like I want to have the ability of being able to squat in all the different positions. And, you know, if I'm limited to that, to me, that, that a lot of that is a mobility issue. And that's something that I look to uh, and point towards to try and address. So it's not that, um, you know, it might not be the stance I'm always in, but the, the capability to do it, I have, and I have acquired. Yeah. You, here's a test you could do if you can lay on your back, um, and put your butt up, like your feet up towards the wall, Put yourself in a squat position with your feet flat up against the wall. Turn your feet in, out, and if you can do it without by laying on your back, then then you could do it with the right strength and mobility. What's preventing you is lack of mobility. It, it reminds me of when uh, I went to go see Dr. Brink, and he put me in this 90-90 position, right, where my front leg is in front of me bent at 90 degrees and my back leg is bent at 90 degrees but going behind me. And he said, for the back leg, he goes, do you think that you could bring your foot up towards your ear, the back leg? And I was like, no, no way. That would, There's no way that could happen. And he goes, well, you actually have the range of motion. He grabs my foot and he lifts it and brings it up. Now, I had no strength to control over it. It felt like he grabbed someone else's leg. It felt very strange. But he was proving that, I, that my hips could do that. I just didn't have the strength to control over it. Right. And that's, that's essentially what it is. If it's your anatomy... It's not because you're tight or weak. It's because there's a bone that's in the way. It, literally, you right. can't do it because the bone locks, right. and it's in the way, and you'll know it. You'll, get, you'll try to get in the position, and instead of it hurting or feeling tight, it literally feels like – it's like I'm trying to bend your elbow backwards. It ain't going because there's a bone locked into position. So if you can lay on your back, bring your knees up with your feet flat up against the floor like, a, like you're doing a squat – turn your legs in and out. Like there's your range of motion. 
You might not own that range of motion. You might not have the mobility to do that range of motion, but it exists. So then your job is to work on mobility, work on strength, work on your ability to move in that range of motion and own it. The more you own different ranges of motion, the better your workouts, the better the potential for building muscle and strength, and the lower the risk of injury. It's yeah, just a fact. The more stability and security you just provided. It's just a total fact. So look, if you are if you want to work on your mobility and practice, this, here's something you could do. You can go to uh, primeprowebinar.com. It's a free webinar. Adam actually takes you through mobility movements. Here's the, here's the challenge. Follow the class. It's free. Do what Adam tells you to do in the webinar, and then go squat mm-hmm. and see if you feel any difference. If you feel zero difference, maybe it's an issue with your hip, with your joints. If you feel a difference, probably a mobility issue. And, and just because you can't squat down in the 90 degrees doesn't mean that it's the hips that are causing that. That's just it. So, I mean, the trainer that was arguing with me, I clicked on his page, of course, and, you know, he's he's squatting with his feet uh, externally rotated. So, of course, that's why it offended him. He's a trainer and he's squatting this way. And he has uh, squat shoes on. Uh, and so, I mean, for me, it's like very obvious that the, the limiting factor here is ankle mobility. Right. I mean, you, you've got a heel rise and you're opening your feet up, which allows more knee travel. It's easier uh, for your knees to travel further with the feet externally rotated. So it's it's a it's a very obvious. This is not a hip thing going on here. This is like if you were to address your ankle mobility, and and here's the thing. By the way, I come from a place of being the person that had that didn't have that. It was fucked up, you know. So I get it. I know what it's like to not want to admit that. Oh, I can't I can't do that. You know, I can only go down to ninety because my hips like because I didn't have I didn't have the hip mobility and the ankle mobility to do it either. It just took a lot of work. So my thing is, and it's not saying it's also not criticizing those that are th- right now that's the only way they can get squat to depth so i i would take a client and if that's the only way they could squat to depth is the squat shoes and then the external rotation that's probably how i would squat while i'm also addressing mo- mobility issues in their hip and their ankle at the same time so it's okay that you use tools like this as long as you don't really you don't just accept that oh i probably have these hips that are shaped this way no there's not that many people that have hips that don't allow you to go down with toes straight to justin's point we should be challenging that we should be able to squat with our feet six inches apart from each other then super wide like most people's hips will allow that with their toes pointing straight allow them to mm-hmm. do that if you work on the the mobility and the strength and the control in those ranges of motion it's it's just that we've neglected it for so long that it feels like most of us can't do that, and that's not the reality. No, and it's it's funny. A trainer said that. I think the last lesson you learn in fitness, if you do it long enough, is you learn to check your ego and be okay with the fact that you suck at certain things. And maybe the reason why you suck at certain things is because you didn't place a lot of time on them. I know it feels... Uh, like tough, like if someone says to me, like, why didn't you, you know, you're not good at this exercise. Part of me wants to be like, well, that's not my fault, you know, but, you know, after a while you start to say, well, yeah, it's because I'm not focusing on that. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But these, what we're talking about, what we're saying is is true, generally true. There are exceptions to the rule, but the vast majority of people who have to squat that way, it's not because your joints are built that way. It's because you just don't have the mobility. But this is good news because yeah. you can improve it. It's you can great address news. it. 